everybody this is father Warner de souza and we are in the 11th week um, of ordinary time we are in tuesday and we are reflecting on matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 48. the last of the hypothesis really tests the endurance of a disciple for the challenge it poses is felt in our everyday life love your enemy and seems like a winning statement for the Nobel Peace Prize and yet those who have advocated it have been assassinated and put to death. Jesus Christ, Martin Luther, Gandhiji to name a few. It is interesting that world leaders winning the Nobel Peace Prize call for peace, never for love. Peace without love is a truce ready to crumble. Yet the message advocated by Jesus to Christians is not some hopeless idealism. Remember that the hypothesis thought by Jesus were a way to challenge the disciple towards being more and giving more, as well as a strategy for overcoming the persecutor. Christ is not calling the disciples to an introverted aggression, but an aggression transmitted into a strategy for winning through the wisdom of love. In presenting the last of these six hypotheses, Jesus is also contesting the false and twisted preachings of the Pharisees and scribes. It is for this reason that he begins by saying, you have heard it was said. It was the scribes and Pharisees who took the divine law of love your neighbor from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 and dropped the words as yourself and added their own non-biblical words, hate your enemy. Clearly the blasphemers were the teachers of the law themselves. Jesus corrects this teaching when he asks us to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In his teachings on love for the enemies scattered all over the gospel, Jesus has been consistent on who the neighbor or enemy is. In quoting selectively only the love of neighbor and mandating the hatred for enemies, the Jewish authorities had given a carte blanche to the Jews to only care for a fellow Jew. Hatred for the pagans and outsiders had now a religious approval. It is for this reason that when Jesus was asked by the young man, who is my neighbor, he launches into what was to become a parable told across faiths, the parable of the Good Samaritan. This is more than a feel-good story. The Samaritan was viewed by the Jews as an outsider, as an enemy. Strangely, it is he who proves to be a neighbor and friend to a Jew who perhaps with his sanctioned religious hate may not have been as kind should the roles have been reversed. Jesus also realizes the frailty of human nature when it comes to loving our enemy and that's why his next words after forgive is pray. It is human folly, if not arrogance, to believe we have the power to forgive. If that grace does not come through prayer. These words spoken on the Mount of Beatitudes are lived by Jesus on the Mount of Calvary when nailed to a cross. Jesus utters the prayer, Father, forgive them. Jesus is not merely offering forgiveness in words. He is offering it in prayer to the Father. Forgiveness must be accompanied by prayer. Then progress is made then perfection is experienced. If you want to get someone off your hit list, then you have to place them on your prayer list. God bless you for listening to these videos. I ask you if you would like to subscribe to this channel and also if you would like, you could go to my blog where you would get the text version. The name of the blog site is potipadre.com. That's P O T T Y P A D R E.com. You can also find me on Instagram. God bless you. Have a blessed day.